Hi, and welcome to the first Swift iOS programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at Apple's newly introduced programming language for iOS and OS X, Swift. Swift replaces Objective-C, which was Apple's industry standard programming language for iOS and OS X for almost 30 years. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a basic Hello World application for Swift, as well as taking a look at Xcode 6's new features, as well as iOS 8's new features. Generally, Swift is quite different from Objective-C, while retaining some similar styles. In truth, it's really like Objective-C, but slightly different syntactically. This tutorial will cover Swift from the very basics, so it is suitable for anyone who hasn't even learnt Objective-C. So, let's get started. If you haven't downloaded Xcode 6 and you're watching this before the public release of Xcode 6, you will need to get it. The only way to get Xcode 6 at the moment is to become an Apple developer, or that's the only legal way, and that costs $99 a year, but it is worthwhile, as it will allow you to download Xcode 6 in beta as well as iOS 8 and OS X Yosemite. OS X Yosemite is not needed to run Xcode 6, and Xcode 6 won't replace Xcode 5 if you already have that on your computer. So I've downloaded Xcode 6 from Apple's Developer Center, and I'm now going to open it. So you'll notice that there's a new option when you open Xcode, which says Get Started with a Playground. Now that pretty much allows you to type code and see a live rendering, however we're not going to use that. It's particularly useful when developing games. So let's just create a new Xcode project. We've got a few options as we did in Xcode 5 with Objective-C. We've got a master detail, which is for iPad and it creates a split screen, we've got a table view or a list on one side and a main view on the right hand side. Page based application which as you can see from the icon is pretty much a scrolling application like the iPhone home screen. A single view application which is just a basic application with one view. Tabbed application which has a tab bar down the bottom like the tab bar on the app store or the tab bar on the music app on iPhone. An empty application which pretty much just gives you a completely blank template and then a game. So let's just start with a single view application. Let's call it Hello World Swift. Now I'm going to, for the organization name, enter my organization name and the same for the organization identifier which is going to be com dot the company name, so the Swift project, dot Hello World and then it's already automatically added dot Hello World Swift. Now by default the language will be set to Objective-C, so you need to click on that and change it to Swift. The great thing about that is you can still develop Objective-C applications in Xcode 6 while also being able to use Swift. I'm also going to choose iPhone and we're not going to be using core data because that's much more complicated. Click Create, choose somewhere to save it and then click Create. Now let's first start by making it only a portrait application. The rest we can all leave the same and that's pretty much aesthetically how it looks on the phone, such as the app icon and the loading screen. So we don't need to look at that for now. That's more if you're planning on publishing your application. So let's first take a look at the file structure in Swift. As with Objective-C, we have an app delegate, which pretty much communicates with the iPhone's operating system. So it talks to the iPhone's operating system and pretty much tells it about uh, the code that you have written. Sort of like a delegate in real life, let's say politics for example. Now the app delegate used to be appdelegate.m, which was an implementation file, and appdelegate.h, which was a header file, and that was Objective-C. Now it's all merged into a single file. So if you want to declare variables, for example, you can do that all within the one .swift file. So you can see here they're creating a window, and this is all by default by Apple. So we don't need to adjust any of that for now. That's all to do with the app's life cycle such as when it opens on a user's phone and closes. We only need to focus on viewcontroller.swift and main.storyboard. So let's start in main.storyboard. This is where we're going to be setting up the interface for our application. Now the application is going to have a label or a title, and that's going to say hello and then the user's name, and the user will enter their name into a UI text field, which is essentially a text field, sort of like this one here or this one here. So let's first start by clicking on View Controller in the View's hierarchy. If you can't see that view, make sure you have it open by clicking on the button in the bottom left. 
You should also be able to see the sidebar on the right. If you can't, click the button in the top right of Xcode to show it. Now, you might also not be able to see the objects inspector, so pull that up and make sure it's selected onto the cube so you can see objects, uh, user interface objects. Now, select view controller under view controller scene and the whole view controller should be highlighted or outlined in blue. Change the size to be iPhone 4 inch screen and make sure the orientation is set to only be portrait. Now, although it's only rumours at this stage, it is thought that Apple is going to be announcing a new iPhone with a bigger screen. So it's giving you the option of having uh, a sort of a square screen. So you're able to make sure that your app looks the same on a square screen and an iPhone 5 screen and an iPhone 4 screen just so it supports all sizes of screens. We're not going to worry about that for now though. So, inside the objects panel, scroll down until you see label. It should say a variably sized amount of static text. Get it, click on it, and drag it into your view. You'll see that Xcode provides guidelines, so we can center it in the middle of the screen. Let's now drag it out, so that it pretty much fills up the whole width. And I'm also going to change the alignment to be centered, and I'm going to click on the stepper next to font to make the text slightly bigger. Now let's change the text to be enter your name and column. Now we need to put in the text field. So to do that, find the text field, which is three underneath label in the objects inspector, and let's drag that on underneath enter your name. Again, we'll drag it to almost the full width of the screen, and we can add some placeholder text, and we'll just set that to be name. Once the user starts typing, that placeholder text will go away. Now let's start adding our code to actually make this do something. So we need to go into our assistant editor, which allows us to see the storyboard on one side of the screen and the code, viewcontroller.swift, on the other side of the screen. To do that, click on the tuxedo icon near the top right corner of Xcode. Now, just so I can see everything a bit better, I'm going to close the two sidebars because we don't need them for now. So what we need to do is we need to create a connection between the name label and the code in the view controller. This is so that we can adjust the text on the label. So we create an IB outlet, and that's pretty much the connection. I'll explain it more once we've finished adding the actual code. So right click or control click on a Mac, from enter your name to the view controller. You'll see a blue line will appear with two dots on the end and a blue line will also appear in the view controller. We want to drag that line in between class view controller UI view controller and override func view did load. Then let go. You'll see that the connection by default is an outlet and we can't change that for the label. Let's name it name label and we'll set the type to be UI label because it is a UI label and the storage should be strong although that doesn't really matter. Then click connect. You'll see that Xcode has now added this IB outlet and it's got IB outlet so that's the outlet or user interface element within the storyboard is pretty much what that's saying. Then var and that's a variable so it's anything that can be changed. So obviously a label has various properties such as its text, its font, its position on the screen and all of that can be changed. It is a variable like a number or some text or anything like that. We've then named it name label, so it's gone OK, name label. And then th this colon here is pretty much saying, uh, let's set it or let's initialize it as just being a UI label. We won't give it any properties, so we're saying nil. Nil doesn't mean it's going to come up as blank on the screen. It means it will show whatever the IB outlet is showing, which is whatever is on the storyboard, but it's not going to add anything else. For example, here we could say UI label and we could set its text right here, but we're not going to. So this colon pretty much initializes it or sets it to be equal to this. If we got rid of all of this, all we'd be doing is creating the variable, but it would just be nothing. It wouldn't have any memory on the device, so it wouldn't be able to be used. Now we need to create an action, and the action needs to be called when the user presses the return key on the keyboard attached to this text field. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's a number of ways to do it, but the easiest way is to create an IB action, or at least that's what it was called in Objective C. Now, instead of having methods, you only have functions, which is what the func stands for. So we need to create one of them. And once again, Xcode provides the option to do this simply by dragging from the text field to the code, rather than having to manually type it out. 
So, right click on name, and then drag it to near the bottom, but before the closing curly bracket. So underneath the view did receive memory warning function. Now instead of creating an outlet, we're going to create an action. So the action is triggered when, for example, the user touches down, but we don't want it to be when the user touches the text field. We want it to be did end on exit, which is called when the user presses the return key. And what I mean by when it's called is th this action will be triggered when the user presses the return key, which is did end on exit. Did on end on exit in this context pretty much just means the user clicked on the return key. If it were a button and we chose touch down, uh, touch, touch up inside, for example, that pretty much just means the button has been tapped and let go. So let's name this uh, show, uh, we'll, we'll name this action hello world action. Now again, the name doesn't matter, and this is really only for your benefit that we are naming it in this way. You should try and be consistent with your naming because in a potentially larger application, it can get very confusing if you've got uh, over hundreds or thousands of variable names. You want the arguments to be sender, and obviously event did end on exit. Now rather than type any object, we're going to make it a UI text field. Now any object wasn't around in Objective-C, and what it is, it pretty much means that Xcode will work out what type of object it is. So Xcode, like us, will go, well that's obviously not a button, it's obviously a text field. And it will infer that, um, because it's just implied by the fact that, for example, we're setting its text and all of that. So that's one of the benefits of Swift, is that variables are inferred. For example, here, in this name label that we declared earlier, we're not actually saying that it's a UI label. We're not saying UI label name label, which you'd have to do an objective C. We're saying variable name label, and we're setting it, we're initializing it as a UI label. So Xcode's going, okay, well, we're initializing it as a UI label, so it's most likely a UI label. And all it does for the developer, for you, is it creates your coding more efficient because you don't have to be worrying about what type of variable is that. So what I'm doing here is to explicitly say it's a UI text field because it means when I'm going back to this code in years time, I'll be able to go, oh right, that's a UI text field. So it's a bit easier for me as a developer, at least that's my personal view, but you could keep it as any object. Anyway, let's click connect and now we have this function. It looks a lot like the other functions. It has IV action function, hello world action, and then it's got some what we call parameters and these are the parameters. So it's got sender, and the sender is UI text field. So the sender is pretty much what has triggered the action. And what's triggered the action? Well, it's this text field over here. So it's essentially going this IB action. So this action here, any code that we put inside the action, it's been triggered by the text field, which is called sender. So that's the name of the text field. So like the name of the label is name label, or they've just called it sender here. We could change sender to be uh, how, uh, name text field. So we could do that. So let's do that to make it a bit neater. So we've got the action is called hello world action and it's been triggered by a UI text field, which we've called name text field. Now let's put some code which should be triggered when this action is called, or when this function is called. So underneath the opening curly bracket, which is this curly bracket here, press enter, and inside the IB action, inside the two curly brackets, we can enter the code that we want to be performed when the user presses the return key. So let's think about this. What do we want the application to do when the user presses the return key? We want to set the name label's text to be hi or hello and then the user's name. So let's do that. So we type name label, which is our label, dot text equals, and so all, of, all that does is it says, okay, set the name label's text, so the text shown in the name label, the text visible to the user, to be equal to, and then talking mark, talking mark, and inside the talking marks we can set the text. For example, if I said hello in here, it would, when I press the return key, change the text in the name label to be hello. But of course, we don't want it to just say hello, we want it to say hello or hi, and then the user's name, to personalise it a bit. So, to get the user's name, well the user's name is whatever text they entered in the text field. So we need to get name text field, which is the name of the text field, so name text field dot text once again. Now you can try typing name text field dot text, but that's not actually going to do anything except display the actual letters N A M E text field dot text. 
we want it to actually display the contents of that. And the contents of it are, is a variable. So to display a variable within a string, and this is called a string, so any text in an application is a string. So it, it's pretty much a string of characters, that's where it comes from. So to display a string within here, a variable string, we type backslash and then in brackets we enter the variable. So the variable is name text field dot text. Now for any of you who have done any sort of programming before, you're probably used to having to close the line by either doing a triangular bracket or maybe a semicolon or something like that. Well that's another advantage of Swift and why it's more efficient, so that you don't have to worry about any of that sort of syntax. You don't need a semicolon, Xcode automatically realizes that that's the end of the line. Now that's all the code we actually need. So now we can try running the application and we can see if it works. So up the top you'll see a play button but you'll also see it says iPhone 4S. Let's change that to iPhone 5. Then click the play button. Now you'll see there'll be a loading indicator and then it should say build succeeded, assuming that you made no errors in your programming. If you do, just go over what we've done and see if there's anything obvious that you've done incorrectly. Now it says enter your name and then we've got the name. So as soon as I start typing, you should see that the placeholder text will go away. So I'm going to type Jack, and now the placeholder text has gone away, so I'm just going to now go down to my keyboard, and if I now press return, it should say, Hi Jack, Hi Space Jack. Ready? And Hi Jack. So it did it. So it said, Hi, as we've got here, and then the name text field, which is this text field, dot text, and the text is Jack. If I change that to be Hi, and just random letters, Again, it's going to say hi, and then the random letters that are in the text field. So that's a very basic introduction to creating an application in Swift. Although it looks very simple, you now know how to create and set up an application in Swift, as well as work with basic variables and user interface elements. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at creating a basic to-do list application using a table view. If you want to run through all of this code and download the code, visit our website, theswiftproject.com, and also be sure to like it on Facebook and follow it on Twitter. All the links are on the website. Thanks for watching and see you next time.